I'm a not uh, an archaeologist either. I'm a bioinformatician, meaning that I work with uh, bio, uh, bi biological data sets. And I just happened to come into this plate area, uh, both because we were able to find it, or also because I find it very interesting. So I'm, I'm also, just as a uh, Wintham, I'm also very interested in talking about results and what can be done and so on. So um, I had this in introductory, very short slide, but since uh, Wintham had already covered it pretty well, I just briefly want to mention that, um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, senior pestis, I mean, the main difference between it and pseudosquerculosis is that the true extraplasmid that uh, Winton was talking about and all of these genes that has lost their function. Um, and I also just briefly want to po point out a key virus gene, which is the YMC gene, which I will um, also talk about uh, further in the talk. Uh, and then I won't really go into details uh, with the other uh, paths. So basically, um, one of the things I'm interested in is the evolution of human pathogens, and of course, uh, plague is a very important human pathogen, both um, uh, back in times and also today. So how did we go from having uh, pseudosuberculosis, which uh, we heard is a mild pathogen, into this um, basically maybe one of the most deadly bacteria that's ever existed for humans, uh, being able to be transmitted by fleas and causing both pneumonic plague and also be Bubonic plate. And uh, to try to answer that, I, um, we basically have to start somewhere completely different. So um, we start out by having uh, a lot of DNA data that's, uh, that, had, uh, that was uh, uh, generated from 100 uh, bronze age samples that, that were collected across Europe and Asia, and these are mainly teeth. And they're from around um, 3000 uh, BC to around 500 BC. And these um, samples were actually sequenced for, for a, a different study where we wanted to investigate patterns of human uh, uh, mi migration um, across up, um, between uh, Asia and Europe. Uh, and, what, um, and that has been uh, published elsewhere. And, and what, um, what we found there was that there were really, uh, uh, that Bronze Age is a, uh, is a time that um, uh, where there is a massive human uh, uh, mi migrations uh, 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 one of them is from the Yamnaya culture, culture from the Pontic Caspic um, uh, steppe, and also the creation of this cold and rare culture in Europe and uh, also in, uh, in, in um, Central Europe and also the northern part of Europe. But when we are doing these kind of studies of ancient DNA, it's actually almost everything, or almost all of the data is actually not from the host itself, from the human, it's from something else. This is something that I've been involved in for, I think now, five years. I mean, always been interested in, so what is the rest? Basically, we are uh, discarding uh, almost all of the data, and it's actually also a lot of money that's just being um, discarded. So um, our group had, uh, uh, for a long time, been interested in trying to see, could, could we actually find something in this, de in this data? Um, and then we went in, into some other uh, evidence sources, and we, uh, for instance, we uh, found this thing here. So, on the y-axis of the uh, plot, you have have the population density of Europe, and on the x-axis uh, you have over time. And here we see that there's re this really nice uh, increase in in the population density over time, until we reach around um, uh, three uh, three thousand five hundred BC, and here we have this drastic uh, drop in the population density uh, in Central and Northern Europe, at least. And we, then we thought, okay, is there anything that is remotely similar to this? And then, of course, we thought about the plague. Um, outbreaks were, I mean, more, uh, maybe up to 50% of, uh, of the European po uh, population was killed, at least during the Black Death. So we had in total 100 billion DNA uh, data points, so this is a lot of data. <laughs> And we then started screening this for plague, uh, and we did this by uh, mapping or uh, by uh, com comparing to um, all of the known pestis genomes, but also pseudotuberculosis genomes, and also some of the more distant uh, um, species. So 
what we were then able to find was actually that we were able to discover or to find plague in seven out of these 100 samples. And this is actually quite astonishing, um, a quite large fraction of the samples where we were able to find it. You also see that they are uh, distributed quite um, over um, a large uh, space, so all the way to the west in Poland and all the way to the east in uh, the Altai Mountains. And, uh, and also in, uh, in time where we have the, the oldest samples all the way over at, uh, in the Altai, which is around 2800 BC, and the youngest samples, which is in Armenia, which is around 900 BC. And it's actually not a Bronze Age, but it's an early uh, Iron Age sample. And the blue uh, numbers here show, um, show the depth of the genome, so basically uh, how much uh, um, how many data points do we have, or how much of the genome have we covered on average? Uh, and we see that basically we uh, have very little data for many of them, but we, for two of the samples we have um, seen uh, the genome almost nine times, and for oh, that's for one sample, and uh, for the um, older sample we, uh, we've, we've seen the genome almost 30 times. So, there, so for those two samples we can be uh, quite sure that we can actually uh, reconstruct those genomes. <coughs> Also, since we knew that this would be a quite big finding, we, were, uh, we also went through extensive um, tests to make sure that this was that we were not fi just finding pseudo uh, pseudotuberculosis or some other uh, bacteria, uh, bacteria that just happened to look like uh, pestis. So, and and that uh, uh, all looked uh, really nice. So <clears throat> then we went uh, into the data and we uh, uh, tried to reconstruct the uh, phy uh, phylogenetic tree. And up in, in the top we have uh, pseudotuberculosis strains, and then we have all the red ones are all the plague strains. And here it's really, really obvious here that plague is basically just a really a subclone of all uh, of uh, pseudotuberculosis. Uh, and also the arrow up there points at where um, our two um, bronze egg samples uh, are in the, in, in the tree. And they're really, really, I mean, there's no doubt that they are truly within the plague um, clade and not some kind of uh, uh, pseudotuberculosis that just looks like plague. And if we look further into this, then we were actually, um, so uh, if we look further into the, into the pestis um, tree, we can see that our two uh, bronze samples, which are the two uh, in, uh, at the top in the orange bar or brown bar, um, that they are actually ancestral to all other uh, plague genomes that we know today, and also from all uh, other ancient DNA um, samples. And this, is, uh, this actually means that what we, what we have here is actually the earliest reconstruction of the plate genome. So we have the earliest versions of the plate genome that uh, had, um, had been found, and also put in uh, the strains uh, responsible for the different uh, pandemics. So there's also been uh, a lot of debate about when did, uh, also as uh, Winton pointed out, when did um, um, pestis evolve? Uh, where did these? When did it diverge from uh, pseudotuberculosis and so on? Uh, and we also went. Uh, and there's uh, been a lot of debate about that. And we could show that our data was actually very good. We actually had information in our data to actually go in and try to do this. I haven't uh, put it in, in here. But basically, basically, you can see that in the blue arrow to the uh, to the left, we can see that. Um, uh, Pseudosquerculosis and uh, pestis split out around uh, 55,000 years ago. Uh, and then the blue arrow just at the um, uh, branch of the, of the plague strains. Uh, so this is the most recent common ancestor of all plague strains. This is also uh, much older than ha uh, had been previously estimated. Uh, so that the most recent common ancestor is around 5,700 years ago. And this is, of course, within uh, a certain uh, some boundaries, and but this also fits really nicely into the fact that the, um, uh, when we have these higher uh, population densities, it also leads to the um, evolution of uh, pathogens, and this is something people have been studying for a long time. So this was just about finding out. So these strains are actually play, and when did it uh, uh, diverge? Uh, but we also want to see what is, is what is it actually capable of. So could it also cause uh, plague um, as we know it uh, from the modern strains and from the pandemics? So what we did was that we went into and looked at 55 
uh, different virus genes, and probably there uh, are many more out there that we didn't include, but these are the ones we investigated here. And uh, so these are on the y-axis, and on the x-axis, uh, there you have all the 140 plague strains. Uh, and if a, a, a dot is blue, it means that we've seen the gene, and if the dot is white, it means that we haven't seen the gene. And if you zoom in, or uh, just look at the two uh, bronze age samples, we see that they actually have all the genes. Except for one gene, which is the YMT gene, and this was the one I briefly spoke about in the beginning, and also the one that one of them that uh, the genes that um, Winter mentioned. And what is really interesting about the YMT gene is that it encodes a phospholipase D, which is required. And I put a, a line under it and a star because I don't think everybody agrees that it's absolutely required. But I think that everybody agrees that it very much increases the ability of uh, pests to survive inside the gut of the flea. So what we then did is was then to look at all of our um, bronze samples, so all seven samples, and those. Uh, and here I have the plasmid where they are uh, located on, so the PMT1. And every circle, every blue circle, is one sample. And the higher the blue bars, the the, more, the higher depths we have here. And what we see is that the YMT gene is located <coughs> in a, a region around. Uh, 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 tw uh, tw 20,000 base pairs, which is not present in our strains, except for the innermost strain, and that is maybe a little bit difficult to see. But the innermost strain is um, also the youngest strain, is the one from Armenia. So what we're able to do here is we're able to uh, see uh, exactly, I mean, where, how does it, when does it acquire this uh, gene. And this is really interesting. Also, we see that this region is flanked by um, uh, tra transposons, and also, uh, so we believe that this region here was then acquired through um, horizontal gene transfer, as has also been mentioned in other um, um, talks or in, uh, in, in other studies. Uh, so, in summary, we don't really believe that it was uh, tr transmitted by fleas, uh, because it's, uh, we also looked into um, additional genes. We also found that they were also functional, so they had not been inactivated yet. So, and together with the uh, with the YMT gene, we then believe that it was probably not transmitted by fleas. And then I have brought something from um, Wintem's uh, presentation here, some of the nice figures he had. So basically, if you want to put this into a timeline here, we start out by having um, pseudotuberculosis uh, at around uh, 55,000 years ago. It's a mild pathogen uh, go going through, um, uh, mainly through the gut. Then um, these uh, ancestral samples, which are the, uh, or these uh, uh, bronze samples, they, again, we believe that this is a, a respiratory disease, so they can cause pneumonic plague. And we actually also see uh, something that, that I haven't talked about today, but we also see an initial attempt to do immune evasion to try to escape the immune system. Um, so uh, these are around uh, 3700 BC. Then actually very short afterwards, we, actually, we find the genes that, or, or we find strains that actually contain the YMT gene. So meaning that um, at around 3,500 years ago, it starts to um, build up the uh, capability to be uh, transmitted by fleas. And around uh, 1,000 BC, we have the first strains that, can, that are both fully capable of uh, flea transmission, but also fully capable of causing a, a bubonic plague. Um, this also means that could earlier plagues okay, have been caused by uh, the senior pests and definitely, for instance, the plague of Athens and also the Antonine plague. I guess we need to look more into that and also some of the other um, uh, possible plagues that's been described. And since uh, uh, this uh, was an uh, archaeological conference, I also put in this slide here, which is so uh, trying to think a little bit about, so um, uh, this bronze age was, um, here we had the, uh, the uh, migration of the Yamnaya people from the Pontic Caspic steppe into, the, into Europe and also over to the Altai mountains. So perhaps, so was plague brought in together with the Yamnaya migration, had it already, um, was it already present in Europe and had already killed off some of the uh, uh, Neolithic <coughs> making room for the Yamnaya, or was it not a fact? And these are some of the things that could be really interesting to uh, investigate. And I think I'm running out of time, so I'll just 
skip to the conclusions, basically, Yersinia pestis was common across Europe and Asia in the Bronze Age, uh, more than 3,000 years before any recording of plague. We can derive a time series of several uh, of, uh, of the acquisition of several uh, virus genes. We don't think it was um, able to be transmitted by fleas and it could not cause bubonic plague. And also importantly for uh, uh, the ancient DNA field, we show that blood-borne pathogens can actually be identified directly from metagenomic data without any prior information of this being present, uh, as, has, as had been done uh, previously. So there were a lot of people involved in this, um, and um, uh, I don't think I will go through it, but just say uh, thank you for the time.